The Right Word, Roger and His Thesaurus by Jane Bryant and Melissa Sweet. Peter Marc Roger, born 1779, deceased 1869. Peter snuggled deeper into uncle's lap as the carriage clattered through the valleys of Switzerland. Baby Annette slept in mother's arms, a small pink blossom against a wall of black. Father wasn't coming back, Peter knew. Mother's dark dress and uncle's sadness proved it. Years later, when Peter began his lists, father's death came first. Peter's family moved often, so making friends was difficult, but books, Peter discovered, were also good friends. There were always plenty of them around, and he never had to leave them behind. When he was eight, he started to write his own book. On the cover, he wrote Peter Marc Roger, his book. But instead of writing stories, he wrote lists. At first, he made a list of the Latin words he'd learned from his tutor. Next to it, he wrote their English meanings. The lists helped him remember his lessons. They also gave him something to do when Mother peppered him with questions. Peter, you're pale. Do you need some air? Monsieur, do you need a nap? Oh, Peter, won't you eat something? Mama, I'm fine. Although, to be honest, Peter thought, fine wasn't quite the right word. Every year, Peter added new lists to his book. Some of his favorites were the four elements of the weather, and in the garden. His mother complained that Peter was always scribbling, but Peter's word lists were not just scribbles. Words, Peter learned, were powerful things, and when he put them in long, neat rows, he felt as if the world itself clicked into order. Teenager Peter was tall, thin, and very shy. He spent hours reading science books. He especially liked one written by Linnaeus, a man who made lists just like Peter did. Linnaeus put the names of animals and plants in categories, and that made nature much easier to study. Just as Linnaeus had wandered through his garden in Sweden, Peter wandered through the London parks, making lists of all the plants and insects. He preferred to wander alone. But Mother didn't approve. Peter, thank goodness, I thought you were lost. Mama, don't worry. Perhaps worry wasn't quite the right word. What was the right word? Peter began a new list. Worry, fret, grieve, despair, intrude, badger, annoy, plague, provoke, harass, enough to drive one mad. How wonderful it felt to find just the right word. If only all the ideas in the world could be found in one place, then everyone would have one book where they could find the best word, the one that really fit. Peter carried this idea with him like a secret treasure. In 1793, the Rogers moved to Edinburgh, Scotland, where Peter entered medical school. For the next five years, Peter studied hard. He was only 19 when he graduated. His uncle warned him that he was too young to become a doctor. No one will take you seriously. What could he do in the meantime? He could teach math, science, and French. He could tutor. Then he met a wealthy man with two teenage sons. Would you be their teacher? Would you take them traveling? Oui. Bien sûr. Yes, of course. In Paris, Peter and the boys were never short of things to do or places to go. They even saw Napoleon lead his troops through the city. The soldiers marched lockstep in long, orderly rows, just like the lists in Peter's book. Finally, Peter was old enough to be a doctor. His first job was in Manchester, England. The people who worked in the factories there were poor and often sick. Peter tried his best to keep them healthy. At night, he worked on his lists. In 1805, Peter finished his first big book of word lists. It had about 100 pages, 1,000 ideas, and listed more than 15,000 words. He kept it on his desk so that he could find just the right word whenever he needed it. When Peter moved back to London, he joined science societies and attended lectures given by famous thinkers and inventors. Before long, he was asked to give lectures too. But could he do it? Could shy Peter Roger face a crowded room and talk about what he knew? Yes, he could. With his book in hand, Peter spoke concisely, with clarity and conviction. When he was 45 years old, Peter married Mary Hobson. She was cheerful, smart, and pretty. She made Peter laugh. They had a daughter, Kate, and a son, John. Peter remained naturally shy, but now he had many friends. As he grew older, Peter spent less time visiting patients. He would always be Dr. Roger, but now he played chess, took walks, and read books. And of course, he worked on his lists. By this time, a few other writers had published their own word lists. These books helped people to speak and to write more politely. Peter read them all. Kate and John read them too. They thought their father's book was much better. Peter agreed. 
For the next three years, he worked on the book of word lists that he'd written as a young doctor. He made it larger, more organized, and easier to use. Long ago, Peter had discovered the power of words. Now he believed that everyone should have this power. Everyone should be able to find the right word whenever they needed it. In 1852, Roger published his Thesaurus, a word that means treasure house in Greek. People snatched it from the shelves like a new kind of candy. The first thousand copies sold out quickly. Peter was suddenly a popular author, but this did not change him at all. Instead, he went right back to his desk and made new lists. So that today, whenever you need it, you can still find the right word.